Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and this is the Not So Serious Keto video podcast. Solo edition, no Dennis in this one. We will pick back up with Dennis in another week or two, and it does follow exactly the whole stream of conversation that we had on the previous podcast. So some of you were wondering about the last question that Dennis and I were kind of asking one another, and we pick up right there in the next podcast. So if if you're sort of like on pins and needles wondering what the answer will be, probably only have to wait another week. I want to start out this podcast by first congratulating Heather H. Heather was the winner that I drew for the, uh, what was it? It was mostly super fat products, a lot of cookies, some nut butters, and uh, some mixes. There's the pancake mix and the brownie mix. And then I also threw in some other stuff in there just from my own stash, some Chalk Zero stuff, some, some Perfect Keto stuff. But Heather, she was the number that I drew. And I'll tell you, using a random number generator to go through 644 comments, you're really kind of hoping that the random number generator bounces back something like either in the low 600s, so you can start at the top end and just count backwards, or you know something under 30, so you don't have to do a lot of scrolling. And Heather's comment was in the mid 300s. So that was a little bit tedious, scrolling through and loading each of the comments and counting, but no big, I got it done. And congratulations, Heather. In terms of other contests or giveaways, I'm definitely gonna keep doing these giveaways. I don't know what the cadence will be exactly. I'm, I may actually do another one this week with chipmunk baking. So if you enjoy the chipmunk baking mini bites, There'll be a review probably this Wednesday, if not this Wednesday, next Wednesday. And as part of that, I will be giving away, well, actually, I won't be giving away. Chipmunk Baking will be giving away some cookies to three lucky winners. So stay tuned for that. Now for a quick little channel update. I have been getting a lot of nasty comments lately. And that's good, actually, because they tend to be really anti-keto and full of profanity and telling me that they hope I die of kidney failure and things like that. And the reason I think it's good is because it means my videos are getting recommended to non-subscribers. And as a result, I've also seen my subscriber count start to take off again, which is really kind of a relief because February through May, those were some rough months for Serious Keto. And as I've talked to some other content creators, they've experienced it too, but it seems like I kind of got it a little bit worse than some other people. But like I said, good news is channels getting recommended to more people. It's also uh, getting recommended to, I think, more keto people. And I know that because I'm seeing a lot more comments that fall into that sort of ingredient police category, which I'm not generally super duper fond of. And the reason I'm not super fond of it is many times people who take on the role of ingredient police maybe don't have all the information. And a lot of them tend to also really rely on hyperbole. So for example, when I did the 90 second microwave tortilla recipe, I had one person say that it was the equivalent or, or that microwaving something is the equivalent of eating nuclear fallout. Mm, that might be a bit of a stretch. Sometimes when I get comments from ingredient police, I'll ask why they feel a certain way. And you know, if it's something like an allergy or something like that, that totally makes sense to me and I understand. And I try and provide substitutions for those people. But other times I'll say, well, why do you think such and such is bad? And I'll get a response like, it just is. That's not a great argument. The other thing that I'll get is Google it or look it up, which I also don't really care for that much because I don't need more homework. I've got plenty of work to do. You're the one telling me it's bad. Support your, support your case. But when people come and they've got a cogent argument and they've got some research, that is helpful. It's helpful to me. I think it's helpful to all of us. It's the reason why I don't do canola oil or um, what's the, oh soybean oil. You know, I don't see a whole lot of things that have cottonseed oil in it, but I, I kind of would steer clear of that as well. So one of the things that I read an article about recently, it just showed up in my Google News Feed yesterday, is about palm oil. And a lot of people are opposed to palm oil, but if you ask them why, they don't necessarily know. Is it, is it because it's bad for me? Is it because it's environmentally bad? What? 
And this article that I read in Fast Company is great. I'm going to link to it down in the description below because it really explains the history of palm oil, why it's a good oil, why it's a bad oil, and what we can do about it. And hopefully the answer is that there is some reform and we get into more sustainable harvesting and farming of palm oil. But it's really a fascinating article. I highly recommend you read it. I enjoyed it a lot. Oh, back on the subject of nasty comments, I was trying to record using the OBS software some screen capture stuff of how YouTube manages comments and how I, I think that the change in the way YouTube manages comments is the reason why a lot of comments just vanish. Because YouTube has gotten a little bit more, I don't know whether I'd say aggressive, overzealous, um, protective in terms of what sort of comments they get rid of or put into held for review. And I was showing how now if you get an especially nasty comment, it goes into a hidden mode in held for review. So that if you're a really delicate snowflake and you don't want to see people saying mean things to you, you don't have to see it at all. And 60 days later, it just automatically deletes. And I was trying to video capture this and show it, and I accidentally live streamed <laughs> instead of recording. So some of you may have caught one minute of me scrolling through comments, hovering my mouse over certain things, and showing how a comment shows up and held for review. But hopefully not too many of you. In other, I think, kind of interesting channel-related news, I have made another internet YouTube friend, Wes from Highfalutin Low Carb. So you know that uh, Dennis at Black Tie Kitchen and I have become sort of besties. Well, I've got a new bestie, I think, in Wes. He and I got chatting the other day and it was, it was great. I mean, if, if you think Wes is a good guy, you are absolutely correct. Wes is an awesome guy. He is a, he's just a, a, a I don't know, he's everything you would hope he would be. And it was pretty amazing how, how quickly we hit it off, how much we felt we had in common with one another. It was very cool. We're very excited to do some sort of collaboration together, whether that's you know sort of a co-podcast or an interview type of a thing. I think a recipe is in the cards at some point in the future. I think he and I will work something out uh, but I'm excited about that because he is, like, I mean, I'm totally fawning over him here. He's a, he's a super cool dude. And uh, I think that's going to be a fun thing for my channel, at least. Hopefully his viewers enjoy having me over there a little bit too, if, if we wind up doing a collab. So last week, my wife and I went down to Gulfport slash Biloxi, Mississippi to pick up Courtney from the Army. Actually, she was at a Navy base, but it was the end of her advanced individual training. And maybe you saw the video with Courtney and me, uh, what was that, last Thursday? So she is back. In terms of the trip itself, I, uh, I got a confession to make. I broke keto. I was pretty good the first night down there. My wife and I went to an oyster bar and we hit it during happy hour, so it was, I think, dollar oysters, and really went to town on the oysters. It was a very carnivore-ish sort of dinner. Uh, what else did I have? I had a um, shrimp remoulade, so was well-behaved the first night. The second night, we went to a restaurant called Chimneys, and they brought out the fresh-baked bread before the meal, and I thought, what the heck? I'm on vacation. I'm going to have a little bread. So had a little bread, <laughs> and then things sort of spiraled out of control. Well, not entirely. I, my meal itself, I was well-behaved, but then for dessert, they came out and they started talking about some bourbon bread pudding. I think there was bourbon in it. Regardless, it was bread pudding, and I thought, once again, what the heck, we'll have some. And then we went to a casino, and I had some beer, and fortunately, didn't go out of ketosis. I think I'm to the point now where I'm fat adapted enough that I can have a pretty misbehaved sort of day and still, you know, I was still reading. I got as low as a 0.3 actually on my keto mojo, but it was a 0.5 the next day and I think 0.9 the day after. The thing is, I, I kind of believe that breaking keto 
every now and again is a good thing. Whether it actually knocks you out of ketosis or not, fortunately, like I said, for me it didn't, but it's a reminder of how much better we feel when we are in a ketogenic state. I mean, the biggest thing for me was just sort of brain fog. I, I really felt pretty dense and tired and just not, not especially sharp. And to me, that's, that's one of the great benefits of keto. It's just, it feels like your brain works so much better on keto. It just, it felt like a, I was tired too, but it felt like not, not really a, a low grade hangover because I didn't have any like hangover sort of symptoms, but just sort of mentally hungover. Anyhow, I was fully, fully prepared for the keto mojo to read low. And this would have been the first time I would have been out of a ketogenic state since January of 2020, I think so. Yeah, and it, so it would have only been the second time since July of 2018, perhaps. It's been, I've, I have not gone out of keto much at all since I started. So that's good. Now, the one sort of bad thing that happened in the trip, and it has screwed up my 24 and 21 for this month. So the additional thing, the, the positive thing that I was going to do this month was going to be getting out and doing sprints every morning and then walking for about an hour. And unfortunately, while opening the, the main door to our hotel, it was elevated a little bit. Oh, I'll do this so you can see it. It was elevated, I don't know, maybe this much off the ground. There's like a tiny little step up. And the door opened a little bit too easily and a little too quickly and hit me right on the top of the foot. I'm not sure if I broke a toe, if I broke my pinky toe or not, but my whole foot just hurt like crazy. The, uh, the top of my foot, pretty nasty looking bruise. There's still a, a little bit of a bruise on the inside of my pinky toe. Fortunately, it feels mostly better now. I think I'll be able to strap on my running shoes again this Monday. So one final thing that was awfully cool when we were down in Biloxi is we went to a casino and I was playing some three card poker, not well at all. There was a woman sitting next to me and at some point her husband came over and they both looked at me and said, Steve, it's Steve from Serious Keto. So we, we hadn't made eye contact or anything because she was sitting immediately to my left. She wasn't across the table or anything like that. And she said, I thought I recognized that voice. So that was a lot of fun. It's, I don't think it's going to be something that I ever get used to. You know, this is probably the fourth or fifth time that I've been recognized. And every time I think I'm more delighted about it than the person that recognized me. So D, it was great meeting you and your husband, Don and Biloxi. I hope you did better at the table than I did. Now, once again, like last, or no, it was two weeks ago, because last week was the Dennis podcast. So two weeks ago, fairly short podcast. This one also, because I really see the Not So Serious Keto video podcast becoming more keto focused when I've got the material. Otherwise, I think a lot of that peripheral stuff that I've tended to talk about during these podcasts, that's going to wind up over on my other channel, Lean Body Mind. And... If you're interested, I mean, if you enjoy listening to these podcasts, I'll be doing podcasts over there. I think I've recorded four or five videos so far over there, and I think those feel maybe even more conversational than this. If you're interested, if you'd like to get more of that podcasty sort of Steve action, I'll link to that up here or in the end card. As for the Easter egg from two weeks ago, it was another Bugs Bunny. So I had baby bugs, and then I had a grown-up bugs on the stool behind me. This one's pretty obvious, too. I just sort of looked at the camera there. But that's it for this shorter podcast. If you're interested in hearing more of my voice, head on over to Lean Body Mind. Thanks for watching or listening.